What's up everybody, it's right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Red Now because it just came out with another briefing. This one is briefing number 62, Gameplay Changes for Many Maps. It starts out with saying, attention officers, thank you for joining us on the 62nd edition of our bi-weekly development briefing. Today we want to provide insight on gameplay oriented changes that have been for evidence collection and across many of the existing maps in Ready or Not. The maps we'll be focusing on are Port, Dealer, and Farm. These improvements bring our maps further in line with our vision for the game and increase the quality of gameplay substantially. Many maps, where possible, now have more than one spawn location and generally more freedom of movement for you to approach your initial breach. Throughout this briefing, you will see various media that reflect this topic. Please keep in mind that the development content depicted in this briefing is a work in progress and may be subject to change in the game's final state. Okay, the first thing we got here is significant evidence collection changes. We want evidence collection to remain an important element of the gameplay. However, we also want it to be logical and enjoyable for you as a player rather than tedious. Our game data shows that players would often exit a mission instead of trying to collect the last bit of evidence in a map. Weapons that suspects drop are still critical pieces of evidence that you need to secure to prevent AI from picking up and using them. This is unchanged. We did make this process more accessible by newly allowing you to enable an option to outline drop weapons that highlight them when nearby. I like how it's an option. I like that. We hope this prevents you from having to search extensively just to grab the many weapons that drop on each level and below they show a picture of just that i think that's a female maybe not too sure but i definitely see some uh, shell casings on the floor a weapon or maybe evidence that was collected and here's the weapon in question that has been lit up here so it's easier to see i wonder if this is the farm map or the border map i'm not too sure but yeah it definitely shows off that underneath this it says a fallen weapon lying just out of reach of an incapacitated suspect highlighted with a new in-game option i actually like how they have it as an option but uh yeah pretty cool i know a lot of people complain about that type of stuff but you know i like the hard the thrill of finding those weapons Ooh. most notably though map specific developer based objects previously referred to as evidence are now considered reportables hard reportables are clearly listed as mission objective evidence required for finishing the mission soft reportables are generally optional hidden objects for the player to discover reportables get their name by how you simply look at them and report them to talk reportables are more flexible in usage than the hold F to bag style of gameplay that's used for securing firearms. Reportables do not have to be a small baggable piece of evidence. They allow you to report entire rooms as a form of evidence. High amounts of objects like a row of meth on a table or large objects like computer servers. This greatly opens up our development team's opportunities for creative storytelling as you move through our maps. Certain reportables could even unlock as you progress through the level, requiring a first one to be discovered before you can connect it to another. Interesting. You are actively putting the puzzle together, it seems. Then we got a picture underneath that looks to be the server room in the streamer level. From what I understand, this is a uh, crypto farm, which I guess is illegal in some places. Maybe not the servers themselves, but just the fact that they're taking up a lot of power. But that's really cool to actually report an entire room because I've always questioned, like, there's so much stuff just sitting on this table. Like, why can't I just, you know, either bag it all or report it? Very cool, very cool. And underneath this, it just says a reportable in a server room. Report the entire server room. But moving on here, it says, as mentioned, mission objective evidence is also known as hard reportable. Gone are the days of googling where the location of a specific hard drive or small laptops are. For gameplay purposes, we will provide context clues to hint where you should look for certain mission objective evidence. An example of these implicit context clues, find Amos Vols office computer instead of the vague find Amos Vols laptop. Based on this context clue about an office computer, you should keep an eye out for an office space in the map. I guess that makes sense. I think some collectibles I thought were very odd choices, like the gas station, for instance, there's this part where you can literally find a key card that opens up a door that's not only like in a random spot, but by the time that you get the key card, you're already done with the mission. So what was the point of the key card? But anyways, an example of soft reportable would be the red room on Valley, which your team was not aware of at the beginning of the mission. Not every map will have soft reportables, and we plan to avoid scattering them all around needlessly. An example example of an area where we decided not to include soft reportables is the individual pile of bodies on nightclub. This new evidence system is intended to increase tedium of evidence, not increase it. Meanwhile, it opens up many new avenues of storytelling and gameplay flow. So I wonder if we're going to be able to report the entire room. I guess that would make sense. But moving on to the next thing here, we got Port. Port is receiving an entire gameplay redesign on top of a brand new level layout and art pass. The goal of the design is to make Port one of the most difficult levels within Ready or Not. 
Gone. That was said by Grunter. I feel like I haven't heard from him in a while, at least in the briefings. I feel like Port has been redesigned like so many freaking times. Maybe that's just me. But anyways, in an old version of Port, the focal point was on two concrete buildings that appeared thoroughly abandoned and nested in a cluster of storage containers that make up the boundaries of the map. These concrete buildings were claustrophobic and multi-layered with precarious staircases throughout. Although intriguing, it did not evoke the realism of a bustling port that we shifted our focus to. The updated port places you mostly outdoors in the middle of a massive industrial shipping district with imposing crate carrying steel structures numbering about. Workers that are here in shifts throughout all hours of the day just seem to be another element of the port shipping complex. The SWAT team will be thrown into a gauntlet with port, which features a narrow mess of old shipping containers as well as a large expanse that must be traversed before entering the main warehouse. We got a picture here. It definitely looks different for sure like i don't remember a tower like this being here or that i've definitely seen like different iterations of this before i'm wondering if they're gonna keep the people in containers bit i imagine they are but i mean it was such a small thing on the map and they were naked also i wonder if they're gonna keep that or not but anyways the text underneath it says the central warehouse looms ahead also in this version of port we've made substantial changes to make it feel like a culminative experience of some earlier levels several of the cases you've been exploring in the storyline seem to converge into activities that go on there clearing each corner you are illuminated by splashes of industrial light from towering lampposts above that guide you deeper in. While there's a lot of industrial lights illuminating the scene, with the nature of it being at night and in the rain, the light itself is very harsh and does not scatter around as much as daylight does. For instance, industrial lights lead to darker shadows as a result, meaning night vision and flashlights might end up being your best friend going into these areas that aren't directly lit. That was said by the developer Mr. 3D, pretty cool guy. We got another picture that's underneath right here. And to be honest, looking at this, it does not look that dark. Like I could still Still see everything but maybe this is just lightning or something we can see everything for like a brief second but who knows underneath this it says these spots of lights will interrogate your every move oh so the bad guys are gonna see us the moment that we go underneath one of these right is that right interesting the players should feel that wet cold miserable wind as they lurk through this foreboding and challenging environment another quote from mr 3d unlike other maps this one will throw you into particularly inclement weather conditions precipitated by the stealthy nature of its premise you are in the middle of one of Los Unas, worst storms it has ever seen. The torrential rainfall that results further complicates your distant engagement where gaps between shipping containers appear. As you progress through the outdoor maze of this map, you will find yourself breaching a variety of smaller buildings, shipping containers, and a central warehouse. We still wanted the player to be able to see where they are going, as pitch black is not friendly for navigation at all. And we don't want players to feel punished being at a disadvantage. Sure, we're not bringing a flashlight. This is where the overall rain and wetness factor again comes into play where we can use the reflection of the lights rather than direct illumination to pick out edges and highlights on darker objects to assist navigation and we have another picture of port here this looks like maybe the front part where we go in possibly this definitely looks different seems like they really revamped this map or maybe i just haven't looked at it in a while but yeah i mean it looks good it doesn't look very dark because i mean i remember ready or not maps used to be ridiculously dark which worked really well with the end MVGs, but I think a lot of the light maps now just feel like flashlights and MVGs are becoming very pointless as more maps tend to get brighter. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. But underneath this, it says a view of the radio tower, a key landmark on the map shown from a backside of the map. Oh, this is the backside. All right. Well, moving on here, we got another picture, which makes me wonder if this is the one crate that we can open to find people inside. Underneath this picture, it says a fallen flashlight at the entry of the map shows the way forward. That's an interesting way to word that wait so is this where we find people or is this just straight up an entrance into like some hideout or something i don't know but it's interesting now but moving on to the next thing it says so far the gameplay direction and goal of creating one of our most difficult maps yet has come true with our playtesting almost always falling short of a complete mission clear through however the level is balanced in a way where enemies aren't immediately difficult initially only facing the player with pistols and shotguns until the later stages of the 
the level where high caliber weapons become introduced. It will test every part of your skills from CQB cornering to far away firefights. Make sure you kit up your squad appropriately and carefully keep your engagement priority on near to far. So are you saying I'm going to have to deal with people that are in front of me and far away? Jesus Christ. Moving on to the next thing here, we've got Dealer. Dealer, on top of receiving a narrative design and art update with a high number of suspects and civilians. Suspects blend in here with the intent to coerce the SWAT team into gaining information before entering and discerning who is a threat and who is not. There is also an undercover agent on this level who must be apprehended but will appear as a potential threat if not listened to. What? Hmm curious but here's a look at uh, the revamped dealership this slot over here definitely looks a lot more dirtier than what i remembered they've still got that iconic uh inflatable tube man just flailing around like a maniac gotta say it looks pretty good underneath this it says a view of the caesar car dealership parking lot on the left and front entrance on the right the colorful neon signs of caesar's car dealership inscribing the night sky lure you towards destructively deadly engagements among its sickly lit parked cars where in the previous version of the map the parking lot served as a brief entryway to the building itself this version gives you the option to enter the lot or take the street to two other entryways in total you can currently approach from the parking lot front entrance and mechanic garage oh interesting then we got another picture here let's see i think this is further in not exactly sure where this is but i think it's where they kept those tents inside i'm not too sure but pretty cool i like the way that the map is going along underneath this it says a view of the mechanic garage adorned with a mural on the right which leads into the rear of the parking lot on the left up this staircase where we are observing from is one of the main dealerships back entries oh i like my options but uh, moving on to this next picture we got here damn this inside definitely looks a little better than what i remember Although this car seems a little dated, at least compared to this one. They like selling old cars or something? Guess that would make sense. Underneath this, it says, A display room in the heart of the building. Whenever the story allows it, this is the type of map we want to create. Players have multiple ways to enter the main building, and that's always good for replayability. They have another picture here. North Hills Diner, something, pharmacy, other stuff I can't read. North Hills, probably. And underneath this, it says, Storefronts line the street with tents of homelessness occupying the sidewalks. Continuing on, it says, Empty police cars with their lights blaring already barricade this street, punctuated with flesh bullet holes from before your SWAT team arrived. Keep an eye out for any officers down and make sure a next bullet doesn't take one of you. And below this, there is a picture of a crushed police car that I'm assuming probably ran into this light post when the guy got shot. Underneath this, it says, A police car evaded gunfire but encountered a light pole. Yeah, I can see that. Then it continues to say, It's your call whether you take on the fleet of parked vehicles first or risk potential suspects and panicked civilians flanking you as you clear the rest of the dealership building itself set at store closing time armed suspects blend in with the front workers at this largely family business practice precise tactics to preserve life and apprehend the suspects connected to this operation's dark dealings mm. up next we got farm farm contains many secrets and is an onslaught of combat and high stake decision making for the lspd swat team the level primarily consists of tight CQB oriented combat arenas with lots of cover and concealment for both player and threats. We have reintroduced sentry points within this level, making some interior areas incredibly high risk, but high reward for those looking to quickly dominate key movement routes for AI within the map. Hmm. This was a quote by Grunter. He seems to be in this a lot lately. Many of the new scenes of farm without giving away spoilers are presented already within previous volume 61's briefings. So be sure to check for those reference too. The previous version of Farm was dominated by a tunnel system that your team could use to use to make entry into the main compound. Twisting and turning throughout the hillside, you ran into enemies in hallways lined with wine barrels. Okay, so this is that map. Okay, I thought this was a completely different map from Teresa Farm. But anyways, we got the first picture here. I assume this is the beginning? A lot of crashed police cars here. What the hell's going on? Whenever we see a police car that's crashed, it indicates that somebody's gonna shoot at you immediately, right? But underneath this it says, 
a scene from the new farm entry point, Spawn. Our updated version of farm, while still containing a tunnel system, puts more of an emphasis on the above ground nature of the map. You no longer need to enter a tunnel system in order to begin clearing the compound, and many of the photos in volume 61 allude to this fact. The new rendition of the tunnel system serves instead as a cellar space that you can use to traverse different areas of the map. Be careful, for enemies can also use it to flank you as well. And then we got a look at... Hold on, a tick? Is that a freaking AUG? AUG confirmed to be in ready or not. That is wild. But yeah, it looks like we got the underground, which... Yeah, I always thought the underground was a bit odd to me. A big underground place on a wine farm. And like it being in the front where everybody can see it. Like you'd imagine a place like that would be a little more subdued. Well, that's just me. But underneath this it says, One of the many entrances into the tunnel system. Can't wait to see it. And we got another picture here. I have no idea where this is, to be honest. I think it might be where we saw those greenhouses, maybe? They completely revamped this area. But underneath this it says, Clearing some of the farm's property. Cool, cool, cool. As mentioned in the quote at the top of this section, the tunnel can be a key part of your team's strategy to avoid suspects who are posted in lookout positions. While the map is abundant in visual concealment from the climbing vines and garden spaces, it is relatively sparse in solid cover that could shield you from gunfire. Placement of evidence reportables will lead you to a foyer through the vegetation and dusty buildings. We got a little bit of that uh, vegetation right here that's just literally climbing up on the wall. I'll follow this stuff here too. There's a door symbol right here though, so maybe they, he just opened a door? Underneath this it says, the slats on the fences may allow you an occasional glimpse of a suspect. As if they didn't hide enough. But underneath this it shows another picture of our guy looking at some glass. It's very reflective. I think you can see a guy with armor on in there, but it is very hard to see. That's the one thing about Ready or Not. Windows and stuff are very hard to see inside of. But yeah, this is definitely the AUG here. That's new. But underneath this it shows a suspect wielding a firearm while barely visible through a window. In conclusion, our new evidence collection system and updates to pre-existing maps should make your playthroughs more enjoyable and enhance your playability. These opportunities to deliver a cohesive gameplay experience which interface seamlessly with our storyline is coming together for our anticipated 1.0 release towards the end of this year. Before signing off a little planning, we got a picture of the sales floor right here. I'm guessing that this is a, a new map. It says 2023. A lot of subscribers were asking if that meant anything. People are speculating that this might be an announcement for the game being at um, the Game Awards in 2023. That's when they might officially announce Ready or Not's 1.0 release. At least that's what the symbol looks like, to be honest. I mean, it definitely could be. It's definitely a good guess. I mean, what else could this mean, right? That's probably the best place to do it. Let's just hope they don't bungle it like freaking hell let loose. God, I hope they don't do that. But uh, yeah. So one thing I do notice about this is that there's a camera mode. I don't remember ever seeing that. What's what's that all about? Can you actually take pictures of stuff? I'm trying to see if this is like what map is this? Sales for? Is, oh, this might be dealership maybe. Metropolitan area maybe. Hmm. Underneath this it says work in progress. Planning on the tactical tablet screen. Wait a second. Looks like a special entrance might just be worthy of an award show. I wouldn't be surprised. But moving on here, this concludes our 60 second development briefing. Be sure to tune in next time for our more development news. Thank you, Zach, for helping take those wonderful photos and for everyone who provided their insights on these maps. Very, very cool. Cannot wait to play all of these revamped maps. I just hope that everything goes well. They actually launch when they say they're going to launch and uh, there's not that many bugs because there hasn't been an update since like, what, January? We're nearing October. We're, we're in October, actually, and we haven't really had an update. But yeah, what are your guys' thoughts? Let me know. Be sure to subscribe, you know, join the channel, do all that jazz, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. I would just like to take the time to thank my amazing supporters, starting off with Fear Operative, Brigador24, Divine Demigod, Hazel, True Forever, Iggy. If you're someone that would like to join this list, become a member or join the Patreon to keep the channel going. Thank you all for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.